Well, good. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm always in competition with Dave Ward for a slot of presentation, so I appreciate you guys being here. So, uh, good afternoon. My name is Marcelo Silva. This I'm Josh, is Josh Peters. Peters. Oh, thank you. Uh, we'll go over Win Automation, and we're going to do a demo for you what the, what the software is capable of doing. Okay. So the agenda is pretty simple. I'm going to go over Way as a platform. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the APIs, and we're going to do a demo and talk to you about what do we have on DevNet on our presence at developers.cisco.com. We'll talk first about service provider inter enterprise or large enterprise when challenges. So what are the challenges that we hear from our customers they're facing? You know, typical challenges that any kind of enterprise that owns a wide area network has. Traffic growth and demands on the network that keep growing. Sometimes with peaks and valleys, sometimes constant demand of a new service insertion and those kind of things. So that generates a variety of problems, all the way from service velocity of applying a new service to the network and all these kind of things. So how do you know from a capacity standpoint of view or from a capability standpoint of view, what's your network capable of doing? So there's multiple ways of doing. There's offline tools, which is uh, the initial interaction or the initial version of this tool was. Um, we actually bought a company called Keridan about two years ago. They had a, a tool called Mate, which was an offline tool. And the guts of this tool has become one automation engine. And that's what we're going to go over with you guys. I'm going to explain how we merge the best parts of this tool into, an, into a platform that now can do not only offline optimization, but also online optimization. And how does it fit an SDN type of environment? So what is uh, Way or Win Automation? Um, as I mentioned, is the concept of taking everything we had from Keridan and planning, optimizing, and building a network, putting into a server platform that has northbound and southbound APIs that you can do work on it via, visualiz vis via visualization like Mate Design, which is an application, or you can do this via creating apps that query the tool via, public a via REST APIs to have questions to the network. For example, some of the financial customers are looking to say, um, there is a financial customer in the, in the US, for example, that wants to create planes on their network. So if you look at it, they are forwarding planes. And they want to have applications be associated with a particular forwarding plane. And certain forwarding planes will have paths that have low latency. For example, for trading floor type of applications, they want the user to actually go into a location. If the user opened that application, it's going to spawn a VRF, which is a low latency VRF that may connect to a data center. And they want to find out what is the low latency path on my network from point A to point B, and how do I get the traffic to steer into this low latency forwarding plane or demand, right? So the whole concept of having an application or a controller that asks a question to our to way will be like, hey, I spawn a uh, low latency VRF. What is the best path to get from point A to point B with 20 milliseconds of latency, for example? Way will provide an answer, and then the path can be provisioned, and the traffic will start flowing, right? So what is the Way portfolio? As I mentioned, is the tools that we have had in Keridan for about 10 years. We merged the portfolio into Cisco, and we have wrapped a server, a platform around it. So we have the visualization, which is the Mate Live, which allows you to, to a certain extent, and you, I'm not going to read the slides to you. Um, it's on the slides. You're going to have access to give you an X-ray of the network. You have inventory. You know exactly what line cards you have on the routers, which interfaces, which slots are empty, how you can do things like where I'm going to put this new 10 gig line card. If I have too many ports that are open, can I migrate some ports to a single line card and redeploy this line card on a different location. So Mate Live allows you to have this information on a time-based, 
not only from the inventory point of view, but the snapshots of the network. I can also do a time series on how bandwidth, for example, on a particular interface over time is growing. So I can have trending analysis to say, hey, usually at 4 o'clock in the morning, there's no traffic on the network. So if I want to admit a, a demand on the network from point A to point B, and I need 10 gigs, for example, I should schedule this low priority traffic at 4 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. And you're going to see the capabilities in way to do this demand admission not only today, but maybe 10 days from now on a calendaring type of tool, okay? Then we have the analysis, which is traditionally made design, which is the, the jewels of the Keridan acquisition, the algorithm and the user interface that allows you to see, to do all the what if analysis. If you guys were here on the first day on Monday, uh, Rashad and Josh did a very large presentation on uh, traffic engineering and all the different things that we have on the tool in terms of failure scenarios and those kind of things. So all that is also available in the Way portfolio, both as part of the visualization tool as well as via APIs where applications, not only Mate Design, can query the optimization module and say, how do I optimize this path because the latency that you told me for that 20 millisecond is now 30 milliseconds. So I need a new path, a new 20 millisecond optimized path. And we also have with WEN Automation where we close the loop and what we bought from Keridan, the concept of control, which is fulfilling the demands. So between WEN Automation and our tail laugh acquisition, we are trying to close that loop in terms of now that I know the demand that I want. I, want, I know where these tunnels, if you will, if you're using MPLS, should be placed. Now go ahead and program the network. So we're closing the loop from the offline to the online with continuous collection and the concept of being able to program a behavior into the network. And again, this doesn't have to be an automated task. We want it to be automated because, as Rashid calls, we are lazy engineers. And if we do things more than twice, we want to automate something, either via scripts or something like that. So automation can be done. But if you want to just, much like you used to do in the past, see a demand and push a button to now admit that demand, you can do this manually as well. So again, as I mentioned, Way is a platform. It's a server-based platform. So now it doesn't sit on a workstation like the traditional Mate products used to be. Um, we call Win Automation Engine, had many marketing names, so that's why we put the marketing names if you heard them in the past, and SOS, Wave, those were external marketing names that may have come at you from our sales teams, but we call them Way now. And again, as I mentioned, is a platform with a bunch of apps where Mate Live and Mate Design to a certain extent are applications on top of the Way system. In Mate Collector, which builds the plan files and the model of your network is now part of the platform itself. So these are the Way components. So I'm gonna go from left to right to, sh to uh, talk about how does this work. So the collector piece is how you collect the network and build a model. And we have a, all kinds of southbound interfaces. We can collect data via SNMP, NetFlow, whatever. It's out there. We could do this via uh, Yang models and all these kind of things. So the collector collects information, builds what the current view or model of the network is on the plan file. We have the capability, as I mentioned, of the analytics, which is what Mate Live does, which is as I collect this plan file, I take time basis snapshots of this file, of this collection, and I can give you snapshots of time, meaning trend analysis on bandwidth on the uh, bandwidth on the, um, bandwidth utilization on an interface, for example. Right? So in here I'm collecting analytics over time. I'm building a model in which creates uh, a current model of the network which I can ask questions of it. Or I can interact with Mate Design, as you're going to see with Josh, you're going to see the picture of the network and do what if analysis. What if this link fails? What will happen to the demand of my network? What, is the, what, what are the hot spots on the network 
from a um, high availability point of view and all that. Where should I invest my money into, right? From a business standpoint of view, you may have links that are completely underutilized and no matter how much you fail and how much um, um, alternative paths you create, those links are always underutilized. And there are links that are completely overutilized. And if you had add in that particular place a particular additional bandwidth, you would be able to low balance the network. So the concept of splitting tunnels and merging tunnels or merging demands and that kind of stuff. So all this can be op optimized via the truly the algorithm that create mate design that does all the optimization a after the what if analysis and can optimize the network to so the network can behave the best way possible this optimization in this plan file is a, is available via rest apis that's where you can create the applications on top to ask questions of way and then based on the answers you can do something and josh is going to help you do this in things like can I can I admit this demand at two o'clock at two o'clock in the afternoon from data center A to data center B and I need 10 gigabits and I need to be 15 gigs of uh, 15 milliseconds of latency the system may say nope you cannot admit at 2 p.m. usually is the busiest time but you can do at 4 p.m. right so those kind of things those kind of what if questions is what we trying to achieve then from the plan file we have the capability of calendaring bandwidth so if you look at this this is the past the present and the future as I mentioned with way you're gonna have the capability of calendaring bandwidth so you could go and know that if you are in a video contribution distribution network that every day at seven o'clock you gotta take the content from Eastern Europe and sent to Western Europe or vice versa because you have to add do add insertion and what have whatever and all this stuff has to take place at 9 p.m. you can calendar the bandwidth and the model would then create a new version of this file to say well not only I have my traditional traffic but every day at 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. or what have you I have to admit 10 gigabits of net of bandwidth from 4 to 5. So all the modeling that takes place not only take in consideration everything that's happening in the network in real time based on collection, but also all the bandwidth that you assume that you're going to need based on calendaring capabilities. So you're not only stating what you need today, but you make demands of the future and we keep track of those, those future demands and we optimize and use the model to predict everything else that comes in play, right? So if someone, not you, but another department wants to do five gigabits of bandwidth at the same time, the tool may say, hey, I don't have it at 4 p.m. because there's already 10 gigs, but I'll be able to have five gigs at 5.30 p.m., that kind of stuff, right? And from there, if you want to, when it gets to the point that you have to deploy, the deployer via a variety of, uh, of uh, interfaces, NetConfiang, Configlets, and all that, you can PSAP, you can then deploy to the network via, in the case of NetConfiang via TLF, you could actually go and provision this path through the network, or via PSAP and, uh, PSAP and ODL, you could go and say, build me a tunnel from point A to point B, or this demand from point A to point B. Right? So it's very important this, to understand that this is now a live online model. I'm collecting, I'm creating um, a model of the network, I'm taking in consideration calendaring, I'm taking in consideration the past experiences, and I'm exposing this via APIs through an optimized model that people can ask me questions on and make decisions of what to do to the network. And when that's done, goes to deployer either now or in the future to be able to um, deploy this new behavior into the network. So pretty much I told you already this slide, what we can do. We can do optimization and predictive modeling. We can deploy, we can do calendaring. We can plan for the network, for example. One of the, one of the things we 
the applications we have is coordinated maintenance. Coordinated maintenance or um, a maintenance window, for example, could easily be done. I could go into this plan file, I could open make design user interface and say, all the links to this node are going to fail because I know that I'm going to have to upgrade the software in it. What's going to be the impact on the network? And based on this impact, if there's no hot spots, I'm going to say, at 2 p.m., bring all the links down, reroute all the traffic at 1.45 to make sure that I have no down traffic because I know won't be any hot spots. The node goes down, I do my maintenance, and this thing comes back up at 5 a.m., and life is good. So coordinated maintenance is only, I'm talking about a maintenance window, but coordinated maintenance is really looking at a layer three, even a layer one, to see everyone that entails into doing this maintenance and knowing the impact of this particular network operations activity into the network before you have to do it. So it's a much more proactive behavior than a reactive behavior. So this is the app ecosystem where we have apps that we're going to provide to you via our team in terms of what we call reference apps, which are apps that would be 80% done and 20% you're going to have to customize your own environment. Our services team is providing applications. We're working with partners. And some applications, which most of you are here for, you build yourselves. Right? If you have the development practice within your own organizations, you will build those apps and you're just going to use our northbound APIs to query the system in terms of what can I do to the network or what can I optimize in this network. So these are all the different types of applications. Uh, I'm not going to go through all that because Josh is going to do a demo of it. So I'll leave to Josh to do the demo, but before we go to the demo, any questions? So good. So, yeah. uh, so Rashad is here as well. He's one of our uh, system architects. So, whatever questions you have that I cannot answer, I'll just point to him and to Josh. So, <laughs> thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Josh. Marcelo. Okay. So, just to briefly describe the demo setup, I have a Linux server running the WAN automation engine, and that's running on top of a virtual network. Um, I'm taking snapshots of this network and. And I'm using our client application, Mate Design. And I'm also going to be showing the Postman REST client or uh, demo applications that, uh, that I'll be showing as well. So a brief, uh, a brief note about our APIs. They're all on the DevNet. So you can go to developer.cisco.com, go find the WAN automation engine, and they're right there under the documentation section. Um, this is an example of what the documentation looks like. Uh, we have. Um, uh, a REST API call, a description of what it is, uh, the method type. And when you click on one of these uh, request bodies or response bodies, you get an understanding of how to format your request. And um, I would also like to add that we have learning labs that also cover uh, this in much greater detail and give you some great examples, and they're just right across the way. OK, so the demo I'd like to show first. and. Uh, there's two parts of this demo. There's the first part of understanding what will happen in the network if I add traffic. And the second part of the demo is doing optimizations on the network so that I can support a certain amount of traffic. So the scenario is basically that um, I have a request for bandwidth right now. And what happens if I add it directly to the network? So let's get started on the demo. OK. So this is our demo uh, UI. We have a number of apps listed here. But the first one I'd like to go through is the bandwidth on demand application. OK. So first, I'm going to add a demand between two endpoints. A demand is uh, a traffic flow that represents um, you know, a certain amount in megabits per second. And so I'm going to pick my endpoints end as ALB and ATL. And let's say I want to add 300 megabits between these two locations. So first, I query the demand, and I get a response back letting me know that in normal circumstances, 
there's 44% utilization between these two nodes. Now, normal circumstances is assuming nothing fails. But if something were to fail on the network, this demand would experience a 60, uh, that says 65% utilization. And what, that's, what that means is that if this interface in gray fails, that red interface would be that, that highest utilized interface. And so I can choose to admit the demand, or I can uh, play around with my demand endpoints. And um, so what I'm going to do is admit the demand. But let's say I had a second request between these same two nodes that come in after. And this one is for 700 megabits per second. Now, when I ask the system, can the, can the network support this traffic, I get a utilization value, even under normal case, that's well above 100%. There's no way I could possibly put this traffic on my network. However, Way has a number of optimization algorithms that can move traffic on the network such that I can support this demand. So what it's doing now is it's going to analyze a series of seven policies. The seven policies are uh, add one tunnel between these nodes, add two tunnels, uh, give me two disjoint tunnels between these nodes. And so this will take a while. And uh, while, it's, while it's processing, let's look at the Mate Design client. Mate Design is a desktop application. And it gives you a, uh, another way to interact with the Way platform. So I select File, Open from Way, and I specify uh, my server here, and open it up, and I see my network as it is currently. Uh, Mate Design is the, the application that Marcelo was alluding to before, where you can fail things on the network, whether it's uh, something at layer 3 or layer 1, and I can see what the impact is on my layer 3 topology. Switch to uh... okay. So now that it's done processing, back to the uh, web app. It tells me that if I add a tunnel between these nodes, the normal utilization goes from 114 percent all the way down to 81. And so I can choose to admit. And what it's going to do is it's going to follow that optimization policy and add two tunnels to the network that are disjoint. And I can take a look at that in the Mate Design client as well. And the tunnels that I added are. Ah, OK. So this was the network after and before. So let me filter to the LSPs through this interface. And I see that this is one of the tunnels that was added as a result of the optimization. That's a. Uh, so again, yeah. the, the thing to understanding here is we're just showing a visualization that could have been done completely in the background. As long as you accept the concept of auto magic, right? Because if you have an app making those queries, replying and you admitting bandwidth without a human intervention, becomes auto magic. And that's the concept of automation. We're just showing you the steps in here, what would take place through a visualization tool. All these calls are taking place in the background. We're just showing something. We just put a user interface into an app, into something that people have done over many, many years via scripting, right? And there is some policy associated in how this is done. Someone would have to build the policies and someone would have to build the intelligence on the application to deal with things like 
if it gives me an up, uh, an up uh, utilization over 100%, tell the system if it can optimize. When it optimizes, tell me which methods are you optimizing with and what's the worst bandwidth scenario, 81%. If over uh, below 85%, admit the bandwidth. So all this logic would be done in some kind of programmatic app. What we're showing in here is a human doing everything and making the decisions, right? So much like you do in mobile networks with PCRF and all that, it, it's not that different to it. We're just showing you a, visually, a visual representation of what the capabilities of when uh, automation are. Yeah. So any questions? Any more demos? I'm sorry, I, I still can't hear you. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so the fiber cut. Yeah. So we can take. Uh, Repeat the question, Josh. Oh, she she asked about uh, can I reshow the simulation showing the fiber cut? So uh, with with Mate Design, you can take a layer one topology and a layer three topology and map between them. And you can tell, for example, if I were, if uh, if circuits were to fail, or if uh, if a layer one node goes down, what what my layer three interfaces are affected. We take a uh, uh, layer one data from Siena, uh, Siena Infinera, um, and Cisco, and um, yeah. So can you show the layer one map and the layer three yeah. map? So this that's is a layer one map. That's a layer one map. And by toggling, I see the layer three map. So when you, when you say you can take, take data from different systems. We can collect from it, and we can oh. model it. No, it's via methods, southbound interfaces like SNMP or whatever other methodology. There's no auto discovery per se. You have to specify. Now, can be the opt optical equipments can be we support the abstraction and modeling of Siena, uh, Infinera, and Cisco today. No. It will show up. So in the future, and that's one of the things we're doing with TLF, right? That's the whole purpose of this yen model of abstraction, right? When you have the NADs defined, which is network elements um, definitions in TLF, when you bring these things, they will show up in our model as a definition of whatever the NAD is, whether it's a Sienna, Huawei, or that kind of stuff. They will model the network for you. Uh, I mean, they will be represented on the NAD. What you do on top of the model, is up to you, or you're going to query the model in terms of the things that you can do. Oh. Can you speak to this one? Um, so I the question you. was, the layer one stuff, how would the information show on the map? Right, so the collection methods, right? So for Sienna and Infinera right now, we have uh, software that we've developed that uh, extracts report information out of the layer one element management systems for Sienna and uh, Infinera. Uh, both of those vendors are working on controllers as well. And when that uh, interface stabilizes, they're, they're writing REST APIs to those controllers as well. We're going to move our tools to be able to pull from their REST APIs. At the moment, uh, we're pulling uh, report information, so circuit layout records. We, we parse the circuit layout records into, uh, convert those uh, rec records into our, our modeling format and import into the software. For Cisco, uh, we're working uh, in concert with the Cisco optical people to, yeah, that's right, from CTC, yeah. My saving grace, my saving grace. Yes. Uh, 
Say it again, I'm sorry. Right. Right. That's correct. So, Rashad, that's a question for you as well, because I don't know. I'm a business guy. So, um, he asked, uh, you have a layer three topology and you have a layer two topology. I, I kind of know the answer, but he's, uh, he looks prettier than me. So, uh, how do you connect the two today and how are we going to do in the future? Uh, that's the hard part, right? Uh, connecting the layer one topology to layer three topology. Oftentimes, uh, there's enough information in a circuit layout record that we can, um, our software can go in. And for example, you'll get a circuit ID somewhere in the circuit layout record, and hopefully the provider has been disciplined. And uh, in the description of the layer three interfaces, you'll find the same circuit ID. So we hunt through all that and try to match things up. Or sometimes the, uh, the optical uh, gear will have some field uh, that represents the, uh, the layer three equipment port and chassis and all that stuff that it's connected to. So it, that is the hard part. Collecting the, the optical circuit layout records and the hops and the starts, and that's the easy part. Uh, associating that with the layer three topology is the hard part. So there is some people power involved in getting that to work well. Getting the model, at least the initial model to match up. Does that answer your question? More questions. <laughs> Everyone that asks a question, what do I have to give people that ask questions? My great support crew in the back, beautiful lady in the glasses. There you are. What do I have to give to the folks that ask questions? There you go. There you go. Otherwise, I don't give anything. People are going to go back to Dave Ward's presentation. <laughs> so that gentleman and this gentleman ask uh, questions. There you go. Oh, she, okay. she'd ask one too. She asked, but no, she has so many. She has so many <laughs> questions already. Don't, don't worry about it. She had, she had plenty of scars. We'll get, I'll give it to her later on too. Okay, there you go. Please. Okay, excellent question. So the question was, you explained the, the, um, position of TLF within the way, how does it fit? How do you position the SDN controller? So excellent question. So the controller in that sense, where the, so there's two pieces of it that we didn't talk about, the orchestration piece as well as the controller. So the orchestration is also going to be done through TLF, and the controller could be ODL, right? So as we, I'm not showing in here, but we will be sitting above the controller, Right? The controller will be here, and now our interface to a controller, it's going to be a variety of different methods. So we're going to sit on top of a controller, whether it is, as uh, Rashad mentioned, and, and the controller doesn't have to be a Cisco controller, right? As I go into the optical space and someone is building a layer one controller for their particular piece of software, I'll interact with that controller via REST APIs and that kind of stuff. Excellent question. So we sit on top of the controller layer. And, 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 and your question is even better because it really shows the differentiation of our platform. So the promise of SDN is that you're going to have these applications and you're going to have this controller that's going to be able to do these things that these applications do. The difference between our strategy and what we're doing with Way versus a normal environment is what? The way is the piece that gives traffic awareness, meaning the demands that's taking place on the network to the applications so they can make decisions, traffic aware decisions to then program the network. So you can have applications that talk outside away and talk to a controller and say, program this, program this demand. But you have no idea if the demand can be admitted or not and what impacts will have to the network. The difference with way in the middle and having this application engine that has information about the network and the different states of the network, past, present, and future, is that you can ask the questions and say, I have these demands, can I do this? And if not, can you do it better for me if I really need to admit this bandwidth? So excellent question. It shows kind of uh, how we fit into the SDN model. Yep. 
When you talk about service provider MPLS or networks, enterprise networks, they own their own WAN. Yeah, okay. Like a financial. Like but a financial. Uh, my question is, you then see the one optimization engine on top of SDN, not the SDN uh, no, itself. No, no, on top of a controller. We're part of the SDN story, right? SDN is such a broad, broad terminology. Yeah, but basically, SDN by itself, like a controller, will not immediately. How would I say? Uh, it will not have all the logic. You, you mean the logic will be on, on top of it? The traffic awareness is on top of it. Okay. The controller will have its logic to program the network and what have you, but doesn't have traffic awareness. And that's what we bring to the table. Okay, thanks. Do you want to? Um, yeah, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, we, in the beginning of your question, you asked to distinguish between the TLF uh, controller versus the open SDN controller. How do they fit in with respect to Way? Um, obviously, as Marcelo said, we'll be built uh, on top of a series of controllers. And um, the idea is you use the controller that's best for the job. Uh, in the initial stages, we expect that we'd be using TLF a lot for networks that are built with um, you know, current generation hardware and software that don't necessarily support some of the newer SDN protocols. When you need to make changes to the network using classical configuration or netcon for something like that, you would go through a TLF. Um, and uh, if you have newer releases that support things like BGPLS and PSAP and things like that, um, obviously the, uh, the open uh, SDN controller has built-in support for those protocols, and we go straight to that. There's other cases where we might go um, uh, netconf through uh, OSC and then into TLF as well. So there's all sorts of um, interesting things that happen down in the controller space, and our job is to make sure that we use the best tool for the job. Uh, larger service provider networks will certainly have multiple vendors with their own SDN controllers, like there will be Alcatel, Huawei, Cisco, right. Juniper, so you have to integrate all of those to have some, some meaning. Yeah, absolutely. And we, and we cannot expect a network to be either Cisco or Alcatel. And, and, the, reason, and, the, and the reason why we acquire both Keratin and TLF, it's for their multi-vendor uh, capability, which we maintain. And is, as you see in Dave's presentation, is something that we're going to continue to, uh, to develop. In, uh, in what way is the solution uh, aware of uh, quality of service? Because uh, if I deploy it a premium service, it may sure. affect n not only other premium service, but best effort, for Excellent. instance, as well. And so that's the one question regarding uh, quality of service or different classes in the network. And the other, uh, if I dive into a more, in a deeper granular granularity, what about service awareness? So uh, okay. are there ideas in, in that? So I'll, I'll, uh, we support QoS, and I'll leave all the questions uh, <laughs> to give you the details to uh, my, uh, my right brain. Yeah, so uh, ser uh, service class of service awareness is built into the software. Yeah. So you have the ability to track each class of service individually, uh, gauge the, when you're performing an analysis, you can evaluate scenarios uh, independently for each service class. So some scenarios may be very bad for a service class, one service class, but completely no impact on another. So that's built in. The other one is the, uh, the notion of priority, which we carry into the bandwidth calendaring. Um, the bandwidth calendaring uh, f functionality or any calendaring functionality has a concept of priority associated with it. The idea is that if I schedule some bandwidth or some event on the network in the future, and I, the, the analysis says, yes, it's OK, you can, you can do that. Another request may come in at a future time that has a higher priority, which may bump the old uh, previously admitted request. So we have mechanisms in place to then notify the previously admitted request. You were kicked out due to a higher priority request. So that's also built in. Um, and the last component uh, that you were asking about, uh, there was a third thing. Service. Service, service awareness. awareness. Okay, so um, service awareness is actually something that happens at the orchestration layer that sits above what we are doing. So there's an orchestration layer on top that spans a wider span of control 
we form a component of that, but the, there would be the orchestrator above. And, and there are ways in other methodologies to steer traffic based on service awareness, like that example that I gave from financial. The orchestrator would be the one orchestrating a VRF, uh, high priority VRF with a certain latency and all that, and that would be a, a way of doing service admission, but the orchestrator is the one that's going to spawn the VRF, create the, the, the workload at the data center, and ask us what is the 10 millisecond path from point A to point B, and we will have all the cap capabilities to the orchestration. Things like segment routing and things of that nature will have the capability of passing that information into an orchestrator and have the proper uh, characteristics of a demand to be placed into the network. Nobody needs a scarf, it's cold outside. Everyone has a scarf already. That's the bad for the fourth day. As far as I understand, it's uh, way part of the port innovation, right? So it's inside. Yes. Okay. So there are any limitation on uh, purchasing in uh, together with support innovation? There are some functionalities which may differ. No. So no. It's complete support. Part of, and part of the pod, part of the innovation mm -hmm. pod, the, yeah, the yeah. full version of Waze. So if the customer needs your help to map the uh, layer one traffic with layer three traffic then he can get part of the sure. support? Mm -hmm. okay. It's all in the innovation part. OK. That's it. Thank you very much for the brave souls that swing by. Yeah, thank you. Highly appreciate it. Thank you.